Welcome back to Reread, where I'm rereading through the expanded universe in chronological order, and I'm almost done with Knight Errant. Yay. All right, let's talk about the third arc, which is called Escape. And uh, this one does mention the book a lot more frequently than Deluge does, even though it doesn't say it's a sequel to the book. Um, meaning, in uh, the book, uh, Lord Bactra, some of his men, I think, or henchmen, get uh, dispersed and given to Odian. Uh, the grandmother, Villa, tells uh, Odian that. And Villa is basically just torturing the men or whatnot. I, mean, I guess Lord Bactra's men were goods for something. You know, like, oh, uh huh. Okay, but there's that mention there. And then Villa is mentioned in it too. And she's seen, like, in a Odian thinks back to when he was a kid. He was always an ugly kid with a shaved head because he's bald. So he's always been bald. He's the Lex Luthor compared to Damien's evil-sized Superman. Everyone loved Damien. No one liked Odian. Boo-hoo-hoo. And Villa, their grandmother, kind of understood and kept them in check. Oh, it does mention that, and they mention this in the book, Lord Arcadia tells Kara Holt that it was actually to kind of get uh, Kara to get angry at Villa and try to kill her. She says, hey, you know, Villa was the one that ordered the invasion of your planet. I mean, she ordered that Odian come in and kill everyone. And then, you know, Kara Holt thinks she's lying. Well, in this, you know, flashback, Odian is told to kill off Kara Holt's people by Villa. You see he's getting his instructions over a view screen like Batman in the Batcave and Villa's there sitting over him like, ah, you will, you know, go invade this planet and kill everyone. Um, Odian is an interesting character. He's all about death. Everyone must die. <laughs> kind of a one-note villain. But at the same time, eh, I get it. I get. It. They're both crazy. He and Damien are both crazy. It's a one big crazy family. Him and all his crazy cousins. But it starts off where Holt is working for Damien. Why? So she can get in good with Odian's people. Why can't she do that without Damien's help? But Damien's, one of his worlds is being secretly, there's a secret recruiter recruiting Odian's men in Damien's home worlds who, you know, want to kill themselves. They're so upset by Damien's rule. But Damien, who is the sworn enemy of Kara Holt and has been for this entire series, that they're working together so she can take down Odian, it doesn't make sense. Why would she even need the Sith? She doesn't, the whole time, we were told, she doesn't need anyone. She just uses the resources she has and the people who are around her, you know, the people she's helping rescue, who join her cause, whether it's the fallen Jedi uh, from the comic book or, you know, uh, the mercenary in the novel or the, you know, estranged freedom fighter from the last series. No, now it's a Sith. Who is bad? And she even says, I'm no, we're not working together. I'm just using you to get to Odie. And I've told you this a thousand times. I'm not working for you. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So, oh, and on the cover, it's, it's, it's all... Is there a comic book version of clickbait? But the cover is like, Kara Holt, working for the dark side. Kara Holt, the Sith, or whatnot. And you're like, what? She's a Sith now? Oh, no, no, no. She was just working with Damien to get to Odian. And then she disguises herself as a Sith. Her name is Mercy because she shows mercy as a Sith. And everyone is mad at her. Mercy, you picked a terrible name. You're showing mercy everywhere. It's not very good. And you're thinking, this is the same guy that wrote Knights of the Old Republic? Knights of the Old Republic is brilliant. It's brilliant. Anyway, Kara Holt discovers that her parents may be alive. And so she's going on search for her parents. Spoilers, they aren't. But, you know, she finds out what they've been holding. They've been trying to hide this Sith helmet that can... Uh, increase the dark side by despair, by whenever despair happens or, you know, sense of loss or despair, it gives that Sith power. Yeah, you don't want Lord Odian to have that, right? Because he's full of, he, in, he exudes ex, uh, despair wherever he goes, right? By destroying everything. So that was, that's kind of how that storyline goes. But she, as she's infiltrating Odian's, you know, inner ring, boy, she gets in immediately because she's in the hallway with Odian in his room as he's discussing his plans. And is she wearing a disguise? Is she shaving her head? Dyeing her hair? Wearing a fake mustache? No. She just puts the hood over her. But you can see her face. And then afterwards, where Odin is talking to them all and then looking at the screen and talking to them all, you're thinking, Odin, that's Kara Holt, the lady that in the very first comic book series, you said, I vow my you know, ever eternal hatred and vengeance for you. She's standing right there. Well, after they all leave, Kara goes, Whew. Good thing he was tied up in his plans, and he was having a bad headache. They did say that. He has a bad headache. He always has headaches. Odian does. 
Good thing his headaches were acting up and he was tied up in his plans or he would have noticed me. Seriously? Oh, it turns out that Odin was not fooled. He knew that was Kara Holt the whole time. Well, I hope so. You looked at her face several times. But then that makes Kara Holt look like a complete idiot because she's thinking that I'm not going to go in disguise and, oh, good thing Lord Odin didn't recognize me. I was there right to him, but he must have been too absorbed in his plan. Wow, you are stupid. I'm sure that's not what uh, John Jackson Miller wanted us to get from Kara Holt, but that is exactly what it reads like once later on, like issue four or whatever, when Lord Odin says, I knew you were Kara Holt the whole time, Mercy. Well, yeah. I mean, at least Clark can't wear glasses. Also in this comic book, we get a complete retelling of Kara Holt's history. Uh, at first, we're only told that she's crying. There's destruction everywhere. She's crying uh, in, in a, in, in a you know, blown up home. And that's where uh, Vanner, the Jedi Knight, comes and takes her. He finds her there. But we find out there's more to the story. Now, she ran away from her home during, right as the invasion was about to happen, and goes to see Jode. So we can set up that she had a friend named Jode. Because that, and he's of course by the submarine, you know. Joe, get the sub ready and whatever, you know. Okay, so we're trying to tie that to Deluge, so we act like, oh, see, they were always friends. You didn't have to do that. But then, oh no, the the you know Lord Odian's team, they struck the village that she was in. So she goes back and she sees the place destroyed. Mom, Dad, they're not here, and she starts crying. And of course, that's when Vanner's going to find her. Uh, okay. But turns out she, her parents, she didn't know if her parents were dead, and her parents didn't even know if her dead. Now they even explain, oh, your parents never looked for you because they thought you'd be safe without them. I don't know. There's something that makes that explanation. But again, who cares? The parents probably thought, oh, she died in the chaos too. But yeah, parents probably would search until and try to make sure. But because they had to guard this helmet and had to sit there and guard it like Irrit in the Golden Globe or something, you know, and secretly try to deliver it to Odium, but they didn't. You know, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. Um, but they have a message explaining it all, and she sees the whole recording of her parents trying to do a good thing and guard this helmet and try to get it to keep it out of Odium's hands, and, oh, Kara, uh, we love you. Wait, how do you know she's still alive? You don't. I, I don't, it just doesn't make sense. But either way, Odin's going to get the helmet. <laughs> and of course, when he gets the first of the spirits, like, yes, this is great. And he's keeping a bunch, I should mention, he's keeping a bunch of kids uh, in these little isolation bubbles where he basically teaches them to be submissive. And so when they grow up, they'll be slaves of his. Kind of excessive. Why would you go through all that trouble renting out all of that space? Supposedly there's hangers and hangers full of this type of thing. Well, what he does to empower his rage or power his helmet is to, he needs to spare. So he, ready? He turns off the lights on all the orphans. And they cry out because the lights have never been off before. Their lights are always on when they sleep, when they wake, when they watch holo vids. Oh, oh, oh it's dark. And they all, they're all upset. And that gives them the big power. Whew. See how bad this, I didn't realize, I didn't remember how bad this comic book series was. So anyway, he uses that power to do what? To turn everyone against everyone, even his own minions. Because he wants everyone to die. So everyone fight to the death. Everyone. My enemies, my friends, my, my own people. I, I know you're crazy and Lord Damien thinks he's a god. But this is more stupid than, you know, insane. There's a character I forgot to mention. His name is Yulin. Yulin uh, is, at first, he's the top you know, right-hand man of Odin. He's the general that goes into war. Uh, his family died a long time ago, and he thought everything, the life was senseless, so he joined Odin's cause because life means nothing. You know, I, I guess. Maybe that's his, what his alien species believes, or he's that emotionally swayed. But uh, anyway, he went through a traumatic event. Well, Kara Holt changes his mind, you know, with her goodness at the end. And so... Yulin, who'd been talking to her, mercy, you shouldn't show mercy. And now he's like, oh, maybe, maybe it is wise to show mercy. You know, maybe, maybe I do matter. So he goes and he turns back on the lights to all the kids. Not only that, but he takes away Odin's power by freeing the kids. Because when they're free, now they're super happy. Why? They'd be lost. Wouldn't they be lost? Oh no, where's my bubble? Oh no, where do I go? And they all think Yulin is their dad. All 1,000 of them or whatnot. And she's like, well, and Carol Hall's like, well, Eulen, looks like you looks like a family found you. Oh, oh, I see what you did, because he lost his family, so he has a bunch of orphans that look up to him. 
And that's supposed to make him happy. <laughs> I don't know. So stupid. Anyway, I am positive this was going to have more sequels because at the end of every comic book, it says, doesn't say the end, it says, and the fight goes on. Because then Carol's like, well, oh, oh uh, so she gets in her space, she's like, well, back to doing my job in the Sith Empire. And it says, and the fight goes on. It didn't. Thank goodness. <laughs> don't, don't read this. Don't read this. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.